Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Or welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm just going to be doing a little get ready with me video. Is this what the people ask for? No, but it's what you're gonna get. So the reason I'm doing this video is because Sorry, I'm literally just getting ready as I talk and I'll have everything linked. I'm not a makeup artist by any means, but I'll link stuff for you. I'm making this video because my birthday is coming up and I'm turning 26. I'm turning 26 on October 16th. I think I was, I kinda want to commemorate my uh, 25 years, coming in 26 years on this earth because I'm self-centered. Just kidding. I. Just thought I would talk about some things that I've learned over all my years on this earth because back in my day, you know, I was a little bit different. And I am literally mentally a 12 year old. So it's so funny that I'm even making this video. I do not feel 25 at all or 26, I guess, at all. <laughs> I feel like I stopped aging after I hit 12 and I, peaked in middle school. But all that to say, I'm just gonna be talking about some things that I've learned. Maybe I can look back at this later. And they're not necessarily things that I've learned over the last year, because honestly, October of 2020, because of the whole thing that went on with the world, I feel like not much has changed or happened over the last year. But I'm gonna be talking in general about things that I've learned in this life, you know? So I've never had a little sister before, so. You know, the camera's my little sister today. I'm gonna talk to you, ma'am, camera. And it's gonna be very unorganized, but I'm just gonna talk about what I, uh, what comes to my, my smooth brain, okay? First thing I wanna talk about is the fact that I'm 12. Yes, hello, I'm Sydney, I'm 12. Already mentioned that. With that being said, I don't think that just because you're a certain age, it means you need to start being boring and grow up, okay? I think what makes life fun is always having your inner child being alive and well. And I try to, you know, be a little silly sometimes and just don't take life so seriously all the time. I used to be very high strung. I still am kind of high strung, but I used to be a lot more high strung than I am now. And I feel like, especially getting out of college, I've mellowed out a ton and I really think things through and decide whether or not this is something I should really be putting so much en energy towards. Is this really that important that I need to be so bent out of shape about it? Just, you know, keep life as fun as you can because we're only here for a little amount of time, guys. Other thing I wanted to talk about is stages of life. So I'm 26, I'm 25, I'm turning 26. Typically, what would you think a 26 year old would be doing? Think to yourself in your brain, what does a 26 year old's life look like? I, when I was a child in college <laughs> a few years ago, I thought I would be married by 26, you know, living somewhere with my significant other and I would have life figured out, most likely. Well, newsflash, that's not true at all. I feel like I have nothing figured out. Example A, I live in my parents' basement, <laughs> but, the reason I'm saying all of this is that I don't think you need to put pressure on yourself to be in a certain stage of life by a certain age. And I'm working on not doing this. I need to take my own advice. I am genuinely very happy to be living in my parents' basement. And I think it is the best decision for me. And I recommend it for anyone who could, you know, stomach living with your parents. I am lucky and fortunate in the fact that I like living with my parents, but I am very thankful to be living in my parents' basement. I have saved so much money and I've gotten a bunch of time with my family, which when I am older, you know, like 16, <laughs> grown up, I won't have the opportunity to get this time back. So before I grow up and become an adult, have kids of my own, get married, yada, 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 I'm very thankful to have this time with my family that I'm not gonna be able to get forever when I actually do grow up. So all that to say, don't feel pressured to be in a certain stage of your life just because you're a certain age. And I can be living proof that, you know, it's all, it's okay. If you're living in your parents' basement at 26, we're okay. Other people my age, they are, a lot of people are married. A ton of people are engaged. A lot of people already have kids and most people my age live on their own. And I could look at myself and think of myself as a failure. I'm living at home in my parents' basement. I'm not engaged, don't have kids, not married, obviously. But I think all of us need to go at our own pace and I'm very happy with the pace that I'm going at. So you don't need to be comparing your life, your pace, your stage of life with everybody else because 
everyone's experience is different. So for instance, I have been with Matt, my boyfriend for four years. I feel like that's pretty long nowadays. A lot of people get engaged after like a year of knowing each other, which I just feel like I could never, <laughs> but I'm very happy with the pace that me and Matt are working at. As long as you're happy with the pace that you're working at, don't let other people make you feel pressured to take the next step. This is not, uh, I don't know, I am, very not philosophical. <laughs> Don't know what I'm talking about, but I hope you get the gist. One of the reasons I mentioned I like living in my parents' basement is because I save a crap ton of money. So if I were living in an apartment, it'd probably be at least 1500 a month. So I'm saving 1500 extra dollars a month at least. So I am very, very fortunate to be in this circumstance. And my next piece of advice is to save for the future. Don't spend all of your money right now. So if you are living in your parents' basement, I'm not saying that's like a time to just take that 1500 extra dollars and just spend it however you want. Still plan for the future. That's very important in my opinion. I'm really taking advantage of this time in the basement to save up, get my savings in line so that I can eventually, you know, buy the house that I want have uh, the wedding I want. And I really am taking advantage of the mutual funds. So that's another piece of advice. Don't just let your money sit in a savings account and do nothing. You want to make your money work. So the way I make my money work is I use mutual funds and I got pretty lucky. I mean, I've had like a 30% return on my mutual funds and I'm basically getting passive income without trying when I put my money into these mutual funds. And if there's a dip in the economy, a dip in my mutual funds, the good news is I'm young enough to recover from that. So my advice is if you have the opportunity, the luxury to be saving money, don't just let it sit and do nothing. Try to invest your money in a way that will serve you best in the future. So another thing I do is I don't just have a regular savings account. I put my money in a high yield savings account. I think right now I only have 1.4% return or maybe even lower, but needless to say, it's higher than just putting your money in a regular savings account. Just try to make the best financial decisions that you can. I'm sorry, I'm going in circles, but like say you're comparing your lifestyle did you see on Instagram, someone got a really nice car, someone got a really nice apartment, someone has designer bags and they're your age and you're like, what's wrong with me? Odds are they are not being smart with their money and they're probably going into debt. Instagram only tells you so much. You don't know the full story. Yeah, these people are buying nice things, but can they actually afford it? Jury's out. So just be careful when comparing yourself and your situations. Another thing I feel like I need to talk about is, you know, working as a young adult, older teenager, because you know I am, I'm a tween, I'm 12. Anyways, working as a young adult, a lot of times when you're in college, you think about, you know, what you wanna do with your career. And you're probably like, I feel like most of us, a lot of us have dreams of working for like a big corporation, just be, so you can tell people that you work for a big corporation. Like, so you can tell people, I work for Google, I work for Microsoft, I work for name, corporation here. A lot of us dream of working for a big corporation, maybe for status, whatever. Just a little bit of background. I don't work for a huge corporation. I work for a decent sized company. We have multiple locations, but I wouldn't say it's like on a national scale. If I told you where I worked, you probably, unless you're in the industry, wouldn't know what the heck I'm talking about. And all this to say, I am super happy with the job that I work at now. I am super happy I don't work at a big corporation. I don't have personal experience working at a big corporation to compare it apples to apples, but just from my experience talking to other people in big corporations and just hearing stories, I feel like a lot of times, if you're in a smaller, more like family-centric company, you will probably have a better work-life balance and you will probably be a little bit happier. So I am very happy with the job I'm at. I get a super good balance. I love the people I work at because it's a smaller corporation, maybe not because of, maybe it's just correlation. There's a super good benefits and it just feels like a close knit family and there's still room for moving up in the company, all that stuff. Whereas if you're in a bigger corporation, a lot of times what I've gathered is, I don't know for sure, it's harder to get to know people on a personal level you may feel less valued and it's harder to work up the change just because there's so many people. This is just my, you know, my two cents. So if you're in college or you're looking for a job and you're only looking at big corporations because you want that big name, just open the horizons. Cause I seriously feel like with my company, like I just hit the jackpot and I could see myself retiring here and it's so random. 
because I never would have thought of working at this company or in this industry, but really find a job that you feel like values you as a person. I guess I can just talk about my feelings about birthdays in case you feel the same. Just know we're not, you're not in this alone. I get very upset around on my birthday. I'm usually crying on my birthday, I ain't gonna lie to you. I get very emotional about getting older and I'm trying to get better at that. I just wanna be a kid forever as I'm in my parents' basement. As you get older, it's harder and harder or it feels harder and harder, like a farther step away from childhood. So I get very upset about this. I don't like the thought of my parents getting older, my family getting older, me getting older, but I need to remind myself that there's only one other alternative and that is to not be here. And of course I would rather grow older and I'm fortunate to grow older rather than an alternative. So that's how I try to think about it. And I'm trying not to put so much stock on a number. 26, I don't know how to feel about 26, honestly. It's weird because it's like, is it mid 20s or is it late 20s? I'm not entirely positive. I feel like 25 and 26, maybe mid, and then 27 and 29 is late. You let me know in the comments. I'm trying to accept that getting older is just part of life and there's really nothing you can do to avoid it. So I'm trying to get better at accepting the things I cannot change. So if you're feeling that way, just know. We're in this together, you're not alone. I feel like this might come with just anxiety and I am an anxious person. So I am just lucky to have these feelings on my birthday, I guess, I don't know. I do wanna mention, I noticed a change in myself this year, a teeny bit. This is literally so discreet and so not important when I'm about to mention you. But, so I went to Maroon 5 this year, saw my husband, Adam Levine, love him. And this was my third Maroon 5 concert I've been to. In years past, I got what I like to call post-concert depression. It's not actually depression. I don't wanna mock depression, but I would just get very sad after the concert because I saw Adam and I'm not gonna see him for another three years. And it's just like very hard to deal with. But this year I didn't get any PCD, post-concert depression. So I feel like I've grown a little bit in that sense. There's an example of growth, okay? <laughs> Sometimes you just need to embrace life's little wins and that's a little win. I feel like I've improved. So October 16th makes me a Libra. I have no idea what that means. Let me know if, in the comments if you think I fit Libra vibes because I don't know. I don't know anything about astrology. I was due on October 31st. So Halloween, and I was born early. So I was just meant to be a spooky bitch. And fall is my favorite season. Halloween is just everything. So it makes sense I was due on October 35th. So I guess, or 31st. So I guess I was meant to be a Scorpio, but I was born a Libra. I don't know. You guys, let me know, you astrologers, what you think in the comments. I'm very curious. So another thing I wanna talk about is that quality far exceeds quantity of friends. So I have always been, not always, in middle school, I had a ton of friends. And then in high school, I started studying a bunch and I guess I didn't have as many. I don't know when it tapered off, but I can tell you for at least the last eight years or so, I have had on the fewer, side of friends spectrum. <laughs> but what I can also tell you is that the friends that I do have are quality friendships. Friendships I've had for multiple years, some 12 years plus. And really quality is so important in your friendships. You wanna have those people who you can count on in times of hardship and will be there for you, but also friends that, you know, just wanna hang out. And if you haven't seen them in a while, it just feels like no time has passed. And those are the friends that I have in my life and I'm very thankful for it. Sometimes it's easy to look at other people's friend groups and be like, wow, she has like 10 close girlfriends. Well, what the heck? but you don't know the full story. They might all be really good quality friends, but there's no point in comparing. If you have good quality, a few good quality friends, consider yourself lucky because a lot of people just have a bunch of fakes in their life. So when I think about how I don't have 5,000 friends, it's like, okay, but I do have a really close family, which a lot of people can't say that they do. So just when you're trying to compare yourself other people there really is no comparison all of us have different things in our lives that other people may want and they don't have so all of us have different things to be grateful for one of the last points i want to make is i've learned this year especially 
that making friends in your adulthood or post-college is possible. I am like shocked. I have made some good friends after college. One of them I met online on a Facebook group and she has become a good friend of mine. She let me and Matt stay with her and her husband and when we were out of town and another friend I've made has been at the gym. We made friends with this married couple at the gym. We've hung out with them so many times. And basically if you leave college and you feel like, oh, I didn't make those lifelong friends. I'm never gonna make friends again. Just know there is hope. If you're a part of groups or you go to places that you enjoy being at, you'll find like-minded people and just be open to making new friends in adulthood because it's been really cool meeting some new friends. Um, I really didn't think I would, but just be open to it. And don't feel like it's the end of the world if you leave college without what you consider a core group of friends because it is very possible to make friends in adulthood. Also, work. I've made a ton of friends at work. So if you find a company you love, you love the people there, those people can become very good acquaintances, if not friends as well. So just be open to finding friends in new places. So you guys, that is the video. I hope this was, if not helpful, at least a little bit entertaining, I don't know. But I hope you guys liked it. And if you did, please make sure to like and subscribe. I upload videos every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, so you know where to find me. Next time I see you fools, I will be 26. I'll be a whole different person when I'm 26. I'm completely sure of it, I'll be completely different. Let me know what you thought in the comments below and what you wanna see from me in the future. Oh, also, last piece of advice, if you wanna try something new in your life, if you've always wanted to start a YouTube channel, for instance, just freaking do it and stop caring about what other people think. The only person who's gonna regret it in the future is you if you don't start it. So just start it, okay? Okay, I'll see you guys next week. Peace out, bye haters, peace.